Welcome back to Giant Monster Games. My name is Adrian, and today we are taking a look at Burn. But before we actually do that, I want to throw a huge shout out to all of the Patreon supporters, specifically Winnie the Pooh and Tigger. You guys are awesome. Not to Eeyore though. Eeyore, you guys, you need to get your shit together before we can talk about being friends. Oh, ugh. bother. What exactly is Burn? Well, Burn is a deck that is trying to make your opponent lose the game by doing a ton of direct, very fast, very aggro style damage. Let's get into it, starting out with what our actual Burn spells are. We have Lightning Bolt, Lightning Strike, and Lava Spike as our first three burn spells. All three of these guys are doing the exact same thing. They are doing three damage to our opponent's face. Well, technically Lightning Bolt and Lightning Strike could go to a creature, but 99% of the spells we play in this game are gonna go to our opponent's dome because the objective of the deck is to burn your opponent, not to control the board. These are the first three cards. They're literally just doing three damage to our opponent's face. Nothing too special here. The next set of cards, we have Rift Bolt, Skulk Crack and Flames of the Blood Hand. What are these cards doing? Well, the exact same thing as the last three cards did. They are doing direct damage to our opponent's face. They all have their slight subtleties. Rift Bolt, we can play for one mana, and then we play it on our upkeep of our next turn, which is super cool. Skull Crack and Flames of the Blood Hand both prevent our opponents from gaining life if we need to prevent our opponent from gaining life, because, as you might guess, our opponent gaining life means we might run out of enough burn to take our opponent out before they actually take us out. So, we have a way of preventing life from being gained, which is fantastic. The next three cards, as you might guess, also do damage. They are gonna be Shard Volley, Megma Jet, and Searing Blaze. All three of these cards are a little bit more utility slash stipulation-y because we have some requirements we need to fulfill in order to cast them. Shard Volley, for example, you need to sacrifice a land in order to actually play this card. So if we get to turn four, turn five, and we have a bunch of extra lands, we've been drawing land, we can just sacrifice one to play this so it's not that bad, but obviously we're not gonna play this on turn one. This is a terrible turn one play. If you have three of them in your opening hand, you need to mulligan really badly. Searing Blaze deals one damage to target player and one damage to target creature that player controls. As you will see in the gameplay video, this card is sometimes a little bit finicky because if your opponent doesn't have a creature in play, you can't really play it. And then you also wanna play a land before you play this so you can use it for its maximum effort. And then Magma Jet is just two damage, but it allows us to scry two, which allows us to technically fix the top of our library a little bit. Again, two damage for two mana isn't amazing, but it allows us to fix our top of our deck, so that's the only reason why we're playing it. Moving over to our creatures now, we have Monastery Swiss Spear and Kiln Fiend, both of these lovely ladies. Yes, Kiln Fiend is a lovely lady, are going to get much bigger as we play spells. So we play a Monastery Swiss Spear, we swing in, we play a Lightning Bolt if our opponent doesn't block it, it gets a little bit bigger, yada yada yada. Magic happens, our opponent gets burnt to the ground, you kinda get the idea. I don't really need to explain too much more on these cards, other than the fact that they are extremely aggro-y, especially in the early game. So if we can drop a Monastery Swiss Spear on turn one, and we can swing in and bolt our opponent for turn two, it's gonna get bigger, it's gonna get awesome. Our next two creatures are Abbot of Carol Keep and Health Spark Elemental. So Health Spark Elemental is just a fast aggro creature, comes into play, has haste, has trample, can be played out of our graveyard. So a swing in, a swing in, it dies, it comes back, it swings in. And then Abbot of Carol Keep is actually a really interesting card in this deck because like our Taylor Swift Spear, it is going to get bigger as we play spells. So once it's in play, we swing in, it does more damage. Additionally, when we play Abbot of Carol Keep, we actually get to exile the top card of our library and we may play that card until end of turn. So it's basically giving us a free card draw when we play this. So if we're kind of late game, we're turn four, turn five, I say late game, turn four, turn five, we can actually get an extra card draw and hopefully draw into something like a lightning bolt or a one drop or even a two drop spell, ba bam, bolt our opponent's face and then life gets fantastic because we just burnt our opponent's face with um, two cards for one because everyone loves value. So last thing we need to talk about is our land package. We have a lot of mountains and then three ramp pump ruins. Yep, that's right, ramp pump ruins. This card is allowing us to get some extra damage in if we get to the late game and we are kinda stalled out because we can pay four mana, tap it, sacrifice a desert, which we can sacrifice itself, it is a desert itself, and then deal two damage to our opponent's dome, which in some cases may make or break the difference for us because that's what we need. We need, need to do damage to our opponent's face. This is allowing us to give us some extra options if we do get to the late game. And that is the entire main deck, but before we break down this sideboard and the upgrade section, if you wanna pick this deck up in paper, go 
over to Flipside Gaming and use promo code GIANTMONSTERGAMES to get 10% off your online purchase. Or if you want to pick this deck up for MTGO, there is a link to Card Hoarder in the description below this video. Both of these things help out the channel directly by you playing Magic. So if you want to do that, that would be amazing. Okay, jumping over to the sideboard. The first two cards we have are Searing Blaze and Rampaging Velociraptor. Come on, it is not a Ferracodon. It is clearly a Velociraptor in this photo. Come on, guys. Both of these cards are allowing us to deal with creature heavy decks. Searing Blaze obviously does two damage to target creature, and then when that creature dies, fingers crossed that creature dies, a lot of creatures will die. It also does three damage to that creature's controller, so we can get rid of a creature. And then Rampaging Ferastomoraptor prevents our opponents from gaining life, which is very relevant. And then whenever another creature enters the battlefield, Rampaging Ferastodon deals one damage to that creature's controller. So creature heavy decks, people playing Lingering Souls, putting two creatures into play, they take two damage. Additionally, it also has Menace, which can be relevant if our opponent is playing single big creatures and we just need to swing through. The next two cards are Molten Rain and Smash Two Smithereens. They kind of have the same flavor if you notice. Destroy target land, deal two damage to that land's controller. Destroy target artifact, deal three damage to that artifact's controller. You get the plan. We get to destroy specific things and deal damage at the same time. Enough said. And the last two cards on our sideboard, we have Ratchet Bomb and Harsh Mentor. Now, Ratchet Bomb is the only way we have of dealing with Ley Lines of Sanctity, which is a card that makes it so your opponent can't be the target of spells or abilities, so we have to eventually get a Ratchet Bomb into play, tick it up, and then blow up Ley Line of Sanctity. It's really slow, it's really painful, but it is, because we're in Mono Red, the only way we have of doing this. If we go other colors, we can do other things. Harsh Mentor is in here to deal with combo decks, because again, combo decks also give us a little bit of problem, because we definitely don't have any way of disrupting them. We are going to be able to make it so our opponent takes two damage whenever they activate the ability of an artifact, creature, or land. So, that's, I mean, that's, that's all it's doing. It's just, it's just dealing damage, deals two damage whenever they activate one of those three things. And that is the entire sideboard, but a budget deck, specifically a budget deck like this, would never be complete without an upgrade section. So let's take a look at the upgrade section. First thing, let's talk about cards that are still in the mono red package, but do really well if you go other colors as well. We have Elon of the Great Rebel, Goblin Guide, and Blood Moon. Goblin Guide is a 2-2 with haste for one mana, so turn one, swing for two damage. Sure, your opponent may get some extra lands, but you also get some information on what be going into their hand, so it is a double-edged sword. Usually we're doing damage fast enough that it doesn't make any difference, so Goblin Guide is fantastic. Captain, have you realized I'm just like Captain Positivity over here? Edelon of the Great Revel is also really good, and let me explain why, because it may not look amazing from the outside, because whenever a player casts a spell with converted mana cost three or less, it does two damage to that player. So yes, everything we cast will also deal damage to us, but it is more likely that our opponent is going to be playing more stuff and dealing themselves damage. And because we are a burn deck, we are literally, everything we play is targeted to deal damage directly to our opponent as fast as possible. If they take two or four or six extra damage from this, it is a lot, it goes a long way. That's basically the equivalent of two extra spells for us if they take six damage. So something to keep in mind, really good. Yes, we are taking damage, but we are dealing damage faster than we are actually taking it even when we play our own spells. So it is amazing. I know it looks weird, but it is amazing, trust me. And then Blood Moon, if you're going against any strange land or three color decks, Blood Moon's fantastic. Obviously this is a sideboard card, not in the main deck, because the main deck wants to be all burn all the time. The next three cards are targeted if we want to splash white, which is also extremely popular in burn decks. We have Boros Charm, Deflecting Palm, and Lightning Helix. So Boros Charm does four damage to target opponent, which is normally what it's being used for, or permanence you control gain indestructible in time of the turn, so we can use this to protect our stuff. This is not as relevant, usually it doesn't happen that often often, or target creature gains double strike until end of turn, which in some cases can be extremely relevant, especially if you swing it with, say, a Kiln Fiend, and then you play this, giving your Kiln Fiend double strike, your Kiln Fiend now is a 4-4, which does 8 damage. Highly recommend it. Deflecting Bomb is a sideboard card if you're going against another deck that is doing a lot of damage. The next time a source of your choice would deal damage to you this turn, prevent that damage. If damage would be prevented this way, Deflecting Palm deals that much damage to its source's controller. So if your opponent is playing something like a Tarmogoyf and they're swinging with a 5-6 Tarmogoyf on turn 3 or turn 4, then we Deflecting Palm and then deal 5 damage back to our opponent's face, which prevents us from dying and does a ton of damage to our opponent. So Deflecting Bomb is the sneaky of sneak sneaks if you want to play burn. And then Lightning Helix is a way for us to stabilize while still dealing damage. So three damage to target creature or player, and then you gain three life, which is pretty self-explanatory. 
So those are the white cards if we want to splash white, but we can also splash green. Green is less relevant in the main board. It is more of a bunch of sideboard cards. We have a Tarka's Command and Destructive Revelry. Destructive Revelry is basically just an upgrade version of Smash to Smithereens because it destroys target artifact or enchantment and then deals two damage to that permanent's controller. So this is our best way of dealing with Leyline of Sanctity. And I would run three or four of these in the sideboard if you are going to be upgrading and splashing green because you really just need to splash green. Both these cards are splash cards, not main dealing damage cards where all of the Boros stuff, all the stuff that is red-white, you kind of want to put in the main deck. And then Atarka's Command is a little bit strange because it is actually used almost exclusively against decks that are going to be gaining life. So target opponent can't gain life this turn, which is super relevant, deals three damage, so it's basically a two mana deal three damage, prevent your opponent from gaining life. Again, both of these cards are just really good upgrade cards, but in the current meta, they are kind of necessary. So something to keep in mind if you're going to go Naya Burn rather than just Mono Red Burn. And that is the entire Mono Red Burn deck. Until next time, my name is Adrian, this has been Giant Monster Games. If you want to see some gameplay, click in the top left-hand corner of the video here, and don't forget to game like a giant monster.